This little red four-wheeler has been sitting in my garage ever since I moved away from my childhood home about 10 years ago. Occasionally, me and my friend Adrian would get the motor running every once in a while, but it was always a pain to get started. We threw gas in the carburetor, floored it, you name it, we tried it, couldn't get it running. But when we did, we had some fun with it. As you can see, my dad was kind of being silly on it. But enough of that. You're here to see me throw a Predator 212 in this thing. So here is the seven-month journey, yeah, it took too long, of me engine swapping this kid's four-wheeler. So here's the situation. Harbor Freight has a spring Black Friday sale right now, and the Predator 212 is 100 bucks. You know what we doing got a 212 212 oh, yeah. it's going in that and we're deleting the governor Oh yeah, we're deleting the governor, all right. Little editor's note here. I later found out that if you remove the governor, it makes the engine spin fast enough to where the plastic fan blows apart. So I don't have enough money to buy a $120 billet flywheel for this. So I'm not going to delete the governor and I'm just gonna use the governor as a rev limiter. Yeah, please do not put that bag over little children. There we go. Smells like fresh engine. Uh, fresh engine, yeah. I am going to do a lot to this thing. Obviously will not fit in there at its current state. I'm gonna remove the fuel tank, the old air filter, and put, get a custom exhaust for it. Probably just gonna get one of those kits off of Go Power Sports. And I'm gonna use the tank that's already in that four-wheeler because I did clean that tank out at one point. All right, today we're getting this son of a gun running. We got some Castrol GTX 10W30, and it's got that sludge protection, hell yeah. And I uh, got five quarts of it because you know, you gotta do two two or three oil changes for the break-in period. So I'm gonna get the air cleaner back on and we're gonna run this thing completely stock just to break it in. And then we'll get down and dirty with upgrades. Yeah, with the fenders off of this thing, you can really see how much room we got in here. It actually kind of looks like a mini bike now. It does. <laughs> Just ignore the front suspension. It looks like a mini bike. I mean, that's that's pretty much what the 212 is usually in, is in mini bikes. So what now I'm gonna do is take the wiring harness out of it. Just pretty much gut the entire engine out of it. And obviously the oil reservoir. Then leave, leave the fuel tank. Uh, although I might take it out when we're welding it to the frame. So it also will give me more room to see where I'm actually gonna mount everything up because the rear part here, as you can see, it's like shifted over to the left so the chain has to go through this side and the problem with that is the shaft on the motor is on the left so i can't really do a simple chain and clutch system i have to have a torque converter and if i could reuse that torque converter that'd be actually amazing so i could slide it over or something and have the motor in there it's definitely fitting in there <laughs> that's a guaranteed statement right there even with the gas tank on it, I think it would still fit in there. So we figured out how we're gonna get this engine here, hi camera. <laughs> Basically, we're cutting the CVT in half. So this point right here is where the oil is in the transfer case here, or the transfer case for the gear thing. There's no oil past like this point here, so we can just cut this out. We just take the engine part out and slide this in and have belt clutch on the front, so we'll have two clutches for a torque converter. So we'll have torque converter slash CVT, and it goes directly out to the stock sprocket and the stock wheels so won't have to worry about buying a custom rear axle which that would suck because they're expensive like two hundred dollars which is pretty much the entire budget for this build this thing is actually going to be insane i'm very glad i figured out i could literally just cut this thing in half and just get a little bit bigger belt yada yada it'll be ready to go That engine wants to fall. Yeah, the exhaust is still holding it. You gotta get the exhaust out. NASCAR time! Yep, damn, look at that. Clean cut, too. Yeah, it was. It came out very good. And no oil spillage. There is, there, the exhaust is out. Look at all the sludge in there. Oh, it's just the metal, that's not sludge. There we go. Got her out. Poor thing, I guess. It's kind of sad to see the old motor go. Now we're into a new beginning of a much more powerful four-wheeler. 
Here's a photo of the four-wheeler completely gutted out. We left the driven pulley in of the CVT so that we can use it as a driven pulley for the torque converter. The parts that I am unboxing right now consist of a stage one kit for the motor, a custom exhaust, and the driver pulley for the torque converter, which is technically a clutch. Here's the driver. And the mounting hardware. Air filter upgrade. Holy crap, this thing's nice. Wow. All these parts are bigger in person. Actually, the machine's really nice. Okay, so we're gonna flip the whole thing around like this so that it's right here so that we're when we're on the bike like this we can pull it from here instead of having to reach like over here and pull it so you got more leverage okay hey, there's the windy boy oh it's making air noises a lot more air noises <laughs> you can install it like in a lot of okay so it was originally like this now it's gonna be like that i think that'd be smarter straight up and down instead of like this because if it's like that it's, you're gonna hit the air filter a lot and then i'll be able to use the cars and cameras sticker shout out cars and cameras and obviously go power sports so here's the engine in its current state got almost the whole entire stage one kit installed here's a huge time jump because i lost a lot of footage but the motor is now inside of the four-wheeler getting close to ready to rip mode got the engine all welded in it's nice oh god what are you doing? <laughs> seen you record and I go, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta include that. I'm, I definitely am. <laughs> now we gotta figure out what the hell we're gonna do for the belt. Da -da 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 da 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 First actual ride. I don't know how well the belt's gonna handle this. I hope it'll be okay. So I think the main problem with our top speed is this transfer box here. I'm gonna go ahead and find out the exact ratio by putting a piece of painter's tape on this part and over here so I can see how many turns on this side equals a turn on this side and that'll give us our X to one ratio. I'm pretty sure that's the problem. So if we make this a complete straight shaft out to the gear, it should do about 40 miles an hour. Theoretically. <laughs> According to my little tape experiment, it takes 11 spins for that to spin one time. Yeah, it sucks not having an impact drill, so... Um... And yeah, Canada's on fire, so there's a bunch of smoke everywhere. And it's blue over here for some reason, but it's foggy over there, so that's fun. I just drove it around. The reason I'm so out of breath is because it can't take any torque. So what I did was I went down the driveway while the engine was idling. I hit the gas, I gave it all I could. It engaged and started moving. I think it hit like 10 miles an hour actually. It was definitely faster than with the old gear ratio. The belt is not designed for this. It's not designed to be for a continuously variable system. It's designed to be in a tractor like this and not a variable pulley system like this is. And that's why it's ripping it up. A cogged V-belt will be able to handle the torque load a little bit better. And what I'm hoping is it'll be able to move from a standstill. The new belt today, that's, I didn't expect that. We're gonna see if this works. Back to the drawing board. It didn't work. Still the same problem. Decided that it looked better clean. It definitely does. The livery wasn't that great, but maybe I'll get like wrap or something, like a custom wrap, I don't know. But honestly, it looks better clean. That degreaser, hella good. So I was just a complete idiot. The main issue was the sprocket ratio on the chain side of the transmission. So I got a bigger sprocket and here's me installing it. Show you something that I wasn't expecting. Holy, it's bigger than my four-wheeler sprocket. It'll work. That's a decent amount of ground clearance. Like, I think that's actually perfect. Any bigger, it would be bad. Putting the new sprocket on. There we go. The uh, studs are running into the wheel bearing. That's a problem. Great, more TLC. I had to flip the bolts around on the sprocket adapter there so that there's a gap in between bolts and the wheel bearing there. You can see a gap there. It's so it'll actually spin because 
when it was on there earlier, it was not gonna be able to spin. It's current config, it will be able to. Now this part will actually slide over, keep it in place with the wheel, be able to spin the four-wheeler. So I figured out how long I need the chain. I need to stick the master link in there, but I need to figure out how to shorten the chain. So I'm gonna have Cameron come over with like an angle grinder, cut that pin off there so I can stick the master link in. We'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, chain is on, nice and tight. Got the master link in there. And we're, I think we're ready to go now. So it's really late at night. I don't know if I'm gonna want to do it because I don't want the neighbors to get mad, but it's honestly more of a morale thing than a legal thing, in my opinion, so. So I found this cool GPS speedometer app that I'm gonna use. See how fast we can go in a second. Okay, this is gonna be sketchy as hell. Here we go. So we found out the four-wheeler can actually go faster than 37 miles an hour simply because the belt that we have on it is too thick and doesn't allow the two plates on the torque converter to spread out as much and reach its maximum speed ratio. I know you're probably tired of hearing this on every single video on YouTube, but don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our second speed run with the other belt.